mad to think how many like men have died in the war. And I didn't really realise how heavy the guns were and the rifles. It was really good. It, it, it looks really hard, but when you get into it, it's quite good. And we looked at all the planes and the different things, like the cannons and stuff, and we went inside them. Um, and I liked it about um, the trenches because I'd never heard about it before. It was it was like quite a nice memorial, but the problem is it, I didn't find it as nice because it was vandalised. Little bullets, I think they were called lucky bleeders or something. We made some clay models and we were doing little statues and, you, and I couldn't imagine trying to shoot people with that. We went to a classroom where they had all artefacts. Zombie sort of things. I did the clay thing when you were when we were printing like the poppies and the flout and the leaves onto it. events have rumbled on since those gagged days, like traffic checked a while at the crossing of city ways, and the haunted gap in your mind has filled with thoughts that flow like clouds in the lit heavens of life, and you're a man reprieved to go, taking your peaceful share of time with joy to spare, but the past is just the same. And war's a bloody game. Have you forgotten yet? Look down and swear by the slain of the war that you'll never forget. I think it's incredibly sad because it represents so many things. Um, as well as a, a monument to honour the dead, it was a, a really beautiful piece of art, a, a wonderful commemorative artwork. And uh, a lot of people have mentioned the fact that uh, Merthyr Tydfil, who is Tydfil, and uh, the statue that has disappeared from the centre of the monument was the only representation of St Tydfil in the town. So it's very, very sad. The mother and the child and the father are the miners that represents the community. Their sons went off to war. They depicted the, the, the miner and his wife with the children looking down on the memorial itself and thinking oh, what a waste of life war is. So these war memorials are a way of us remembering the soldiers, the fact that often bodies weren't brought back and the families do not have um, graves to go to to pay their respects. We're very lucky in Cafartha Castle Museum. We do have some war memorials on display. Um, we have plaques, but they're protected um, at the end of the day. Outside in the community, what we really need to do and what I would like to see is these actual beautiful war memorials, uh, which are a part of our history, which are um, beautiful objects, I want people to be able to sort of take responsibility for those so that we don't see them vandalised and we can see them as being a part of the history of the community. Children from Merthyr were given the chance to take part in a project where they would make an animated film about their local war memorial. Well, it was a very exciting project. The project was going to bring to life um, something that can be quite dry. 
that the planning stage meant that we could look forward to using experts from other fields coming into the school, working with the children and doing things that we wouldn't normally be able to do. We're, we're called Kinetic, um, we're a, an animation company. Um, we do commercial work but we also work with groups of young people, find a local story um, or subject matter and we make a film, animated film. We decided to make a film about the Pont Morlice uh, War Memorial. This particular uh, memorial at Pont Morlice has, is, is, has been very neglected over the years and um, so it seems that seem to be quite a sort of powerful symbol of how war is forgotten. The project sort of included lots of workshops with, the muse um, with museums, talks, um, visits, so the kids could get a real understanding of the sort of impact of war and, and the idea of remembrance really and why these memorials were put up. We went up to Kavartha Castle and we looked and we went up in the hall yeah, we made like sculptures, um, like little memorials and that for the people who died and we made like lots of people, soldiers, sculptures and with a big um, cross on and poppies around it. I wanted to produce um, a sculpture which each individual child would produce, whether it was a symbol, um, a soldier's name and hopefully get a greater understanding about why we have these war memorials and why we want to remember the people who were involved. Can you tell me what yours is? Um, it's a cannon. Sorry? It's a cannon. A cannon. And can you tell me why you've chosen a cannon? Because there, in the war there were people using cannons to fire at the enemy. Do you recognise that model, anybody? Can you see anything different about this model compared to the, uh, the finished monument? Have a look. The angel's missing, that's right. I think it was damaged, so it was all part of the damage. People were doing things to that monument for a long time. Nearly all of us, when we look through our family history, we've all got someone who's been involved in the war and make them realise that these monuments are about their families, uh, the people who lived in their communities, and the fact that the past make it more real, more tangible, something that you can touch rather than uh, a bunch of facts and figures. I grew up on a girl's estate, and then uh, I moved away to London for about eight years. And then I, I lived in various... We had uh, an author who was originally from Merthyr come into the school to work with the children on writing poetry on the First World War. And he made them really think about the sort of emotions uh, that the, the people during the war were going through. I am the enemy you killed, my friend. I knew you in this dark. For so I think, uh, first of all, we were trying to raise consciousness of, of what war actually means. Anybody here got relatives in Iraq at the moment? So my uh, task really was to get them into an imaginative state where they could put themselves in the position of somebody who was at the front. Generally I begin uh, getting them to focus on, uh, on a dream they've had, just a dream image. Because when you dream, you dream in huge landscapes already. And then uh, we work with those dream images to, to create a, uh, a kind of space where we can, we're in an imaginative space. From this different portal into a different dimension. Wow, strong stuff. Good one. Really well done. And they could, Im they could imagine themselves, to a certain extent, into the situation of somebody in a, in a uh, position of incredible stress. Or else we want you up. So we said, go on then. I think it's really important that the children get this uh, possibility to stimulate their imaginations because they, they have this enormous imaginative potentiality that is often untapped, I think, in, in a school system. <laughs> Now then, if you have a look now down to the left, 
Well, the, the visit to London was an exciting one for the children. Lots of them had never been to London. But there was great excitement as the children got off the coach and saw HMS Belfast on the River Thames. And they couldn't quite believe that this is where they were going to be staying. Uh, we got onto the boat and we were immediately met by the staff who took us to the uh, sleeping quarters, which again caused great excitement. Uh, and then we had a tour of the boat. And imagine having your appendix out. And the ship's doing this. Yes, you are now underwater. This is the section of the ship below the bit you can see from the shoreline. This is how they lived in the 1940s when they had hammocks. They were in here all the time except when they were working. So their food, one of them would collect their food, bring it down and they would dish it out between them. They would spend all their free time in here. I will be showing you some things that we were thinking about this morning, okay? Just to answer one question, yes, it's all real. How many men do you think have got inside one of these things? Yeah. It was sort of, it was quite interesting because um, when we went to the War Museum, I wasn't really expecting to learn anything new because I didn't really know that it was going to, we were going to learn about uh, uh, the amount of stuff that we did. What can you tell me about World War One? Yeah, at the back. It ended in 1918. It ended in 1918, okay. It must have been a surprise to people in the summer of 1914 to go to war. Why? Why do you think it would be a surprise, yeah? Because they weren't expecting it. Yeah, they weren't expecting it. Australia was part of Britain, Canada was part of Britain. I like the, the fact that we had a man t um, telling us more and we and I liked it about um, the trenches because I'd never heard about it before. And the mud with the puddles and the water could suck a horse and a gun down in about half an hour. So why, why on earth would you fight a battle there? I want you to look at why these men have got their hands behind their backs, behind the back of their heads when they come from. The Imperial War Museum, that was quite good. Um, we went to a classroom where they had all artefacts and then it, the man there, Granty, told us all about the artefacts and what they were used for and why they were used. So, you unscrew that. And I didn't really realise how heavy the guns were and the rifles and, and I couldn't imagine trying to shoot people with that. Trying to just hold it up was a bit of an effort. I've just learned like how, what it would have been like down the trenches, like the smell of dead people and all shell shock and all that sort of stuff. London has got some amazing memorials, so we, we took them to the Cenotaph um, in Whitehall. The Cenotaph uh, was something that they'd seen on television before, uh, and actually being there and looking at it and hearing about what it, would, what it meant, uh, again brought the whole thing to life for them. It's mad to think how many like, men have died in the war, like about 60,000 people died in one day on one part of the war, so it's quite weird to think how many dead people would have been around and you couldn't bury them so you'd have to keep them in the trenches and sleeping with a disgusting smell and the memorials tend to like put thoughts into your head like what would have happened like if if that happened it today like
But when they came back to school, having visited London, uh, they were very keen to get on with the work. And when people came in, experts came in, to do all sorts of different animation work with them, um, they were even more excited because there were things going on that they'd never seen before. Uh, they'd seen animation on television, obviously, but had never been involved in making any sort of animation. So they were, they were really enthusiastic about that. Uh, and having experts in the school to do it with them really brought a, an extra dimension to the work that they were doing. When we go into the school, we storyboard the film, which is a way of, of kind of working out the visuals of the film. Following that, we kind of create the animation in the school uh, working directly underneath the camera with different materials, sand, drawing, uh, cutout, and uh, we produce the actual artwork with the children. What we wanted them to do actually was look at um, war artists uh, from that era. We were particularly looking at, at um, Otto Dix, uh, he's a German artist from the First World War, and he really did some amazing pictures of his experiences in the war. This man who uh, drawed in the war, now, now, like if I see charcoal, I might buy it in like drawing his style of the film because it's quite a good style as you said like it's not too neat or it's not too tidy so it sort of puts the emotions into the picture yeah we've done um, loads of drawing with charcoal and we had to do loads of pictures we've done some sand animations well sand animation is we're creating animation directly underneath the camera with the children and they see the results straight away so it's you know it's quite kind of exciting in that way it's good for certain kinds of subjects so this because this was about war and a lot of it was at night you know in the trenches kind of thing it was the sand animation was quite a suitable medium it was really good it, it, it looks really hard but when you get into it it's quite good you use your finger and you look on a computer you use uh, either some pencil to make thinner lines and you light you gotta light it up So after we've been in the school, we've, we've got a lot of material together, artwork. When we come back to the studio, we put that all together in After Effects. We, use, we sort of layer up the children's artwork to create more elaborate scenes. Well, this particular project is a collaborative piece between us as professional filmmakers and the young people, using a combination of their artwork and our own drawing, which you know, makes up the finished film. The children then went to the Pont Morlice Memorial to meet George Gardner from the Royal British Legion. He told them all about the history behind the memorial. During the war, everyone was devastated in Europe. It was really vandalised, it was really bad. I, um, the main statue had been taken away and lots of people had drawn on it. I felt a bit sad that it had been vandalised in the way it had because um, Merthyr hasn't really got many memorials to remember the war. Dad, I saw the news today about the war, which made me think about writing to you. I know it's really dangerous, but I know it's for the country's good. I hope you're safe and well, and the war will end soon. From Dad.
from your loving son, George. We thought it would be nice to make a memorial of our own with the children because the film is about their interpretation really of war. We brought in a sculptor, Carlos Panatti. And we're going to work with clay. Yeah, every one of you is going to have a squirt of clay. And we're going to put a wall. And um, he has a way of working with uh, objects pushed into clay and then cast in plaster. The children were fascinated by what they were going to do with the clay uh, tiles. Uh, they, they could see a lot of um, resources there that were going to be used but couldn't quite imagine how it was going to look and working again with an expert in that field and um, they they really got to grips with what they had to do basically the process is to lay a bed of clay flatten it down with a roller pin and after the kids come in with the design already already done they press all the uh, the toys all the elements that are in the map into the clay and that make a print of, uh, of all the objects. I did the clay thing when you act, when we were printing like the poppies and the flower and the leaves onto it. And I felt that was good because it's sort of like a modern a version of a memorial. Yes, a few. On the square with the design, and basically open them all, clean it up a little bit, open them all when they're coming, and what you have is a relief of the square in the map. Well, they'd all been making their own individual tiles, and then when it was pulled together to make the one large memorial, um, they were absolutely thrilled. They couldn't believe that all their little bits of work had come together to make such a large memorial um, that was quite stunning to look at. Would you like to see his memorial somewhere in Merthyr? Yeah. 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 Where, do you where do you think we might want to? Yeah. You could put it um, inside the library. The library, yeah. 
Yeah, by the well, way, right, yeah, 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 but you should yeah. put it outside. Oh, who's, yeah. who's fav yeah. Which is the favourite bit then of everyone's? I like the hand. 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 Okay. The project has been beneficial to the school but also to the local community. Uh, a lot of uh, children in the school were, were unaware of the memorial, they walked past it, um, they, they would never have given it a second thought. Um, also the children have gained so much from working with people who are experts in their field and shown them new techniques and new ways of working. They would not have known how to do certain things had it not been for the project. Well, I haven't done it before, like I, like I have made like little films and that on my computer but it's kind of weird because we're going to like draw pictures and then like make um, sort of draw pictures and then just make them animate and come to life. Um, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Well, it's just been fun, we've been learning a lot so yeah, it's been really good. The memorial itself, I think, had sort of been forgotten about. People who walk past and hardly notice it because of the vegetation. Um, since we've started renovating it, we've had a lot of positive feedback. Hopefully, renovating it will create a sense of pride in this area of the town. Take its place as it, as it did once before, you know, in the heart of the town. Monuments give a certain individuality and character to a place that distinguish it from other places other towns. So what you want, if you're proud of your own heritage and proud of your own town, you want to make it in some way different and special from other towns. I, th I think it's nice to have attractive, beautiful objects in the town that people can look at, I instead of just all modern buildings and shops. And uh, people do expect to have this type of monument in a town, in a historic town. And a town without monuments and without any kind of link to its history, you know, what is it? Just a kind of a shopping centre. I'd like to see more memorials. I mean, I'd like to see, see more things that people could visit and see and that would make people think about uh, the past because people see a memorial, want to know what it is and then might read up something about the history. Do you remember that hour of din? before the attack, and the anger, the blind compassion that seized and shook you then as you peered at the doomed and haggard faces of your men? Do you remember the stretcher cases lurching back with dying eyes and lolling heads, those ashen gray masks of the lads who once were keen and kind and gay? Have you forgotten yet? Look up and swear by the green of spring that you will never forget.